we just finished the arms. Arms down. So in transition, you know, you do both depending on how you transition with the arms. That's right. So we're gonna find ourselves up at the head for the first time. So we're sitting here. We're gonna place our feet on the top of their shoulders. We have a slight bend in our knee. And you want to put your arms behind you to support yourself. And we're just going to do some nice compressions onto the top of the shoulders. So like the same premise when you're using your hands for compression, you want to let your feet also be relaxed. And here I'm using the arch of my foot. So just coming to the top, you're working your way out as lateral as you can onto the top of the acromion and working your way back. Now to bring a little bit more specificity into the top of the shoulder, if you turn your foot out, you can use the heel more directly. Feel a little bit more specific pressure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? And then you're just going to compress down on one shoulder. So this one is still making contact but disengaged, where this leg continues to straighten. So you have some nice stronger depression onto the top, stretching out the uh, neck, the shoulder. And release, and then do the other side. <coughs> and back. Now I'm going to move up a little bit. And you notice how my feet are, heels here, my toes are curling below or distal to the clavicles, and the upper fibers of pec major so what I'm doing is I'm pinning the shoulders to uh, the mat. And then I'm going to take my arms on the inside of my legs with palm up. And I'm going to inhale. And on the exhale, I'm going to bring their chin as close to their sternum as possible, stretching out the posterior cervical. And I'm going to release. And as I bring the head to the mat, I'm going to take one foot off. Then I'm going to laterally flex away from my foot so they get a nice uh, stretch laterally. So it's not rotation where you're rotating, but the nose continues to point up and you get direct lateral flexion. And you're, the body's guiding you here. You want to feel where that resistance is. To keep on going, you start feeling resistance, you hang out there. And release, switch, nice lateral flexion, come back, and we're going to move even closer now, <clears throat> and I'm going to take my hands one over the other at the base of his neck. And this ridge of my little fingers, I'm going to try to put it up underneath his occipital ridge. Because what we're going to try to do is hook and lean back to get some uh, traction in his cervicals. So one hand over the other, hooking underneath, and then just leaning back. Okay. Now, if you're not getting a lot of travel and you're not, you're not feeling it, one thing you can do is you can place your feet on the top of the shoulders, and as you go for traction, you can depress the shoulders. Here, feel a little bit more. Yes. <laughs> so that's a way of doing it. Just going to keep this real simple. We'll add to it later. We're going to do a little petrissage, right? And you're going to take your fingertips, starting from the base of the neck, working up to just underneath the occipital ridge. Your fingers are going to go on either side of the, uh, the spinous process of the cervical vertebrae and just lift up. So they get a nice stretch. You work from the base of the neck 
up to the occipital ridge. Just fingers on either side of the spine. And then come come to the sides here. I want to show you something. Please. Um, I'm going to apply some pressure. Remember in sideline position where we're putting our thumb up underneath the occipital ridge and we're depressing the shoulder? To get these points that are up underneath the occipital ridge, which also happen to be in the bellies of the um, suboccipital muscles. So, we're going to curl our fingers up under. Here's the mastoid process. We're going to curl our fingers up underneath them, underneath them meaning the occipital ridge. And we're going to turn and rest our hand on the mat so it's the weight of his head that's pressing down into the points. You feel it, Danny? <laughs> See? So that's a nice way of doing it, You're using the weight of his head. My hand is resting on the mat. My fingers are just curling up into the occipital ridge. Any position where you can sustain the pressure uh, for a while in a nice supported manner, meaning that the person who's giving is in a relaxed position, that transfers into the type of energy that they're receiving. And release. You're going to do it to the other side too, so you feel, get in position, and then roll the head. of my hands are going right into the temporalis on the other side of the head. And we're just going to apply some pressure in towards the center. And so this deals with the sutures of the individual in the bones of the head. It's pressing and releasing, pressing and releasing. And then we're just going to, with our thumb over thumb, just press right into the top of the head. And there's a point right on the top of the head. If you extended a line from the top of the ears over the top of the head and another line from the nose and where they intersected, this is the crown chakra point. And you want to just press uh, very lightly into the top of the head. It's the soft spot, the fontanelle, actually, uh, which allows the head to collapse during birth so that it can come out and open up like an umbrella, the umbrella head. So nice light pressure, okay, and then out, just nice and simple, the end of day, okay? <laughs> <laughs>